Hey everyone, so this is number two for the week. Now this is our week of mission calls, if you will. Um, and go back and watch John Whitmore's mission call and what I just did the first one this week. And yes, I have contained myself now, I'm no longer crying. It's all good. It's a very, very important scripture to me, that one. Uh, we're going to go over to 3110. Now this is um, Thomas B. Marsh's mission call. And Thomas B. Marsh, awesome person. He, uh, if you read a little bit, I've actually stuck it in my book here, you can see, there you go. This just actually cut out from the Come Follow Me manual. And what I like about this is it's really important to notice, and people think that spiritual gifts are only given to like members of the church, and I've encountered that, and I'm like, no, they are not. Spiritual gifts are given to all of us. It's how we use them and recognize them. Uh, and spiritual gifts aren't always... Like as deep and meaningful as you think they might be either. Sometimes they're just very simple and these are beautiful things. His, however, he said, I had a measure, measure of the spirit of prophecy. He was already a religious leader. He had this spirit of prophecy with him. He knew these things. He knew there was a church coming that it would have truth in its purity. I think it's beautiful. And he left his home and traveled. He spent three months in New York and it was on his way home that a woman said to him, hey, have you heard about that Golden Bible? Um, and he's like, I knew what? And, you know, as often as we find things, we go looking and looking and looking and then someone just says something random and off we go in the right direction again. It's just, yeah, the way God puts things and the Lord puts things in our path that send us on the right track, right? It's awesome. Um, so he arrived in Palmyra, met Mountain Harris. They had 16 pages of the Book of Mormon had just come off the press and he's like, please, 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 very convincingly, obviously, because he got them, got a copy, and he only had 16 pages. So at this conference, the Book of Mormon's not yet printed. He has just recently been baptized. He has read 16 pages of the Book of Mormon and been a member for one month, and he goes on a mission. So if you're thinking, this is one of the important things about if you think you have to know all the gospel and have life experience and everything and blah, blah, to go serve a mission, no, you don't. What you need is faith and the ability to learn, the willingness to go do it. That's it. And you can be the most awesome missionary because you're willing to learn and willing to do the work. That's it. So there you go. Anyway, so in 3110, let's get the scriptures. 3110 says some really awesome things that, um, first of all, too, about his family, that his family is going to be looked after. As we know that when missionaries go out, the families looked after. Not always the way they think you think they're going to be looked after. Sometimes it's the really randomest things that happen. Sometimes you would call them tragedies. Sometimes you would say, oh, that was really painful and hard. But actually, that was the best way of looking after them. Um, because it's not always about you. <laughs> I know. So hard to think about that, eh? Because we all, actually, if we say that, we still think it. It's still up here. Um... Yeah, so we're going to go to verse 10, and he calls him, he says, Behold, I say unto you that you shall be a physician unto the church, but not unto the world, for they will not receive you. So, focus on the church, not the world, because they're not interested. Focus on the church. So, again, preach to those that want to be part of the church. Don't go looking, his call wasn't to go gather people that weren't interested in the world, Preach to those that were interested that want to be part of the church. All right. Um, so, how can you be a physician to the church and its people? Right? Because what's a physician? Physician's a doctor, like a surgeon, a caring person, a healer. Um, yeah, that, that person. Who? How can you do that? And you're going to remind us, uh, President Uchtdorf gave that awesome talk, and I'm going to use the quote from that that you're probably familiar with. But people come to church for healing, supplication, healing, co comma, supplication, to feel like they belong and that they're wanted. They want to feel like they have a place that they belong to, that they're part of, where they're heard and loved. They want to feel that. Um, so what can we do to facilitate that? So, um, the quote, because it's, the first one's really long, let's try to make this one shorter. The quote is from Elder Uchtdorf, the church is not an automobile showroom. Sound familiar? A uh, place to put ourselves on display so that others can admire our spirituality, capacity, or prosperity. It is more like a service center where vehicles in need of repair come for maintenance and rehabilitation. And ain't that the truth? 
I know when I'm at church and I've seen some people that come to show that, you know, put the show on, basically. They're coming all like a car, all shined up and polished and look at my engine, it's going just great. It's like, well, yeah, awesome for you. Um, but, you know, I'm here because, you know, my paint job's dinged and, you know, the engine skips and sometimes in the morning it don't start. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm at church, because I want to know more from the maintenance manual scriptures um to be able to fix my own car yeah that's what it's about so how can you be a physician how can you be a healer to the church and its people so not just the people but the church itself how can you help that how can you help heal that and make it that calming good place think about that as you sit in church on sunday even though we're going to conference um, some of us who watch it delayed will be going to church including myself so think about that when you sit there how can you heal the people around you? How can you be that physician? How can you show more grace? How can you be more kind? How can you be more welcoming? All right, that's number two. I'm going to go over number three, which is found in section 32, and I'll see you there soon.